Jeff, can you talk about uh, the two running backs and how they compare and contrast and how difficult they'll be to deal with? Yeah, th there's honestly not a ton in um, as far as differences between the two. They're both powerful. They're both strong. They're both extremely fast. Um, you know, they got they got the ability to to do the dirty work inside and 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 push the pile and and uh, do the hardball running. But they also have the ability to to finish runs because they both have explosiveness and top end speed. So. Uh, uh, it's it, it's rare in this modern day NFL that you get back to back games like this where there's they're a run first team so it's uh it's it's a great challenge for us. How, how much are you encouraged by what you saw of what the defense did against Baltimore's run? You know as you go into this week. Yeah, I, I was uh you know obviously I was I was pleased with the way that they played the run. Um, Baltimore was a. You know, we had spoke on it that it, it was a tremendous ta challenge in that way. So this is a different challenge, though, like uh, different running style, not as much, obviously, uh, of all the quarterback run stuff that we had to defend last week, but um, the same dedication to it from an offensive perspective. Uh, they're going to absolutely try to try to run the ball like they always do, and they, and they do it at a, at a high level every week. So uh, if we don't stop the run and if we don't play the run well, we're going to have a rough day on Sunday. Do um, you apply the same principles, or is it different because they don't have the ball? Um, I, there are some principles that are absolutely like universal to just run defense, edge setting, pursuit from the backside, all those things, um, understanding the fits and understanding the top run concepts. So from that standpoint, absolutely. Um, as far as you know, a lot of the stuff you have to generate and you have to manufacture for the quarterback component of it, a little bit different. But same mindset and approach, absolutely. Uh, how do you eliminate some of those big plays? It seemed like the defense was doing well, but some of the big plays really killed you in the end. Yeah, um, obviously we gotta we gotta coach better and we gotta we gotta execute it better. Those are things that uh, we work on daily. Um, we understand the type of defense that we play. That there's certain concepts that we see every week, you know, and, and that's kind of that falls into that bucket a little bit. So we'll just continue to um, to know these these principles and these and these concepts that that face us every week and and uh, do them at an unconscious level, you know, where it becomes so secondhand and it's just it's just what we do. So and and we're getting closer to that. How, how encouraged are you by uh, how DJ and Sauce both played, and how nice is it have two corners and you got to leave on an island like that? Yeah, and it not only. Did they they perform at a at a good level, you know? And there's still a lot for both of them to achieve and, and play at a higher level. Um, it's the mindset of both too, you know. And that's not saying anything about anybody else that's ever been there because everybody's always had a tremendous mindset and approach to the game. But um, these are two guys that are are begging for more of the man, more of the challenging ops. So so that stuff is really cool. Jermaine Johnson, just how do you think he uh, performed out there? He got his first set. Right, it was a good start. You know, like um, I think when you look at him, obviously the length jumps off the table because he just he's he's very long, he's very fast, and both of those things definitely showed. Um, probably what I was most um, excited about though was his level of physicality, his edge setting. Um, he had the tight end a couple times from a six technique and uh, did a really nice job in that way. So long way to go, nowhere near what he can be, but uh, I was uh, I was encouraged. How did you, when you think Carl? fair in this first game in a long time. He did good. You know, he looked explosive. He looked fast. He looked um, extremely strong. Uh, it's one of those things, though, and it goes back to defending um, Lamar, and it's it's a little bit different way in that you rush him. You have to be so cognizant of level with the quarterback and not going past, and you have to be so synchronized as a defensive line that sometimes um, you sacrifice a little bit of your aggression and your ability to really get after a quarterback. So, uh, and that, by, by me saying I'm not um, implying that Brissett doesn't have mobility because he does. He is a good athlete and he has some speed and he can he can hurt you with his feet. But um, different than Lamar in that way. When you say a long way to go for for Jermaine, what what are next steps for him? Just keep refining hand placement, leverage, eyes, uh, alignment, just everything. There's just inches in all his game, you know. And um, but at the same time, like I said, very encouraged about what he showed. On that touchdown, on the 55-yard touchdown, what what do you think happened there, and how can you get that cleaned up moving forward? That it's just that you know I I don't want to necessarily point fingers at anybody because it's all of us, and, and it starts with me in that way. And um, obviously, I need to to coach it better and create more clarity there. Um, a lot of things uh, go into that play, you know, and um, we're going to work our butt off to make sure that it doesn't happen anymore.
just how do, you, how do you kind of resolve overall? Like, you guys did a lot of good things, but also gave up some big plays that hurt you in big spots. So how do you kind of just look at the overall performance of the defense from Sunday? Yeah, I, I was encouraged from the standpoint of our approach and our energy, and it just felt different collectively as a unit. Um, there was uh, definitely some edge to the guys. There was some um, just – a different sort of energy like you got to deal with us today and uh, that was exciting to be around and to feel now it's the the except fours you know good defenses always have except fours except for this play except for that play except we got to eliminate those if we want to become a great defense a feared defense then um, you got to eliminate the the explosive plays for sure and uh, our guys understand that and they absolutely accept that challenge and as a coaching staff we do too Jeff, from, from your perspective as a coach, you, you just said like the edge, you know, you, you saw that. Is there anyone in particular who kind of you know, brings that or sets right. that tone? Um, like, is it CJ? Is it, you know, Jordan? Is it a few guys? Yeah, it was, it, I felt like it was a lot of different guys. You know, you had, um, I, I, I think Quan is the guy that kind of unhinges us a little bit. You know, he has such juice and passion and energy and, and, and swag and, Comp, like he's got a little bit of all that stuff that great defensive players have, um, and he also has an amazing ability to affect others and, and influence others and bring people along with him. And uh, he's constantly challenging and talking, and um, he 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 is the guy. And you know, it's it it's really unique that it's a guy that, from everything that I've heard in San Francisco, he did the same thing there, kind of unlocked their defense in that way as far as bringing out their personality and bringing edge and bringing passion and juice and and the 17,000 handshakes that he has and all the celebrations that he has and like he just he brings so much in that way um, we're lucky to have him so how, how is it why is it important to have like juice guys like Quan Alexander to the play to the defense I just think it's debilitating to an offense when they see us acting a fool on our side of the ball and smashing them in the run game in the pass game celebrating talking you know and doing all that I think that's demoralizing sometimes to a, to an offense. Like, damn, we don't got a shot today. Because not only do they feel us from our physicality standpoint, execution standpoint, but they, they see us celebrating and enjoying this game and playing it for each other and, and playing with edge. And, and, and uh, it's just I've always felt the great defenses have that. You know, so we're working our butts off to, to continue to, to let that grow. How does it look for a whitehead this week? And if he can't go, who would replace him? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. Um, I know if there's any chance on earth that he can physically go, that he will go because he's just built that way. And um, But if he doesn't, Will Parks is ready to roll or, or Tony or um, Ashton. And so we have, we're have we fortunate that we've got some depth at, at safety this year. And, and uh, so if he can't go, the next guy will come up and, and he'll do a fantastic job for us. Jeff, what does Will bring to the table? Because he seems to be kind of one of those edge guys a little bit too. Absolutely. Uh, you know? Yeah, he's, he's in that same uh, conversation as Quan. You know, it was interesting. Um, you know, a lot of teams have the policy that the, the un – uh, the guys that don't dress for game day, they go up to the booth or they go in the stands or whatever the case may be. And uh, I was adamant. Like, I, I love all those guys on the sideline, the guys that don't dress, because I just think it's such a it's a gift to them for all the work that they put in during the week. Because although they're not playing on Sunday, obviously they're a huge part of our, our, our success. Um, but he was a guy that, like, I was adamant that he, need, he needed to be on the sideline because he is – um, obviously, he brings talent and experience and, and toughness to the field, but he also brings that 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 same edge that Quan brings. You know, it's like I think younger players, less ex inexperienced players, guys that don't necessarily possess that. When you hit a little adversity in a game, which we always will hit, it will always occur. Um, it doesn't matter. Even the perfect defensive game, there's going to be some level of adversity. You need those type of guys to steer the ship and and bring you back. You know, when the momentum's not on your side, guys that. Um, you know, they don't clam up and get quiet, guys that get loud and guys that, you know, like allow a defense to just keep it moving. And, and as long as we keep fighting and scrapping and like this thing will turn, you know, so he's definitely one of those guys that helps with momentum, energy, passion, all those things. Him and Quan are very alike in that way. Do you need that for a game like this when you talk about a guy like Chuck? He just wants to run people over. Yep. Do you need that type of mentality? And I think so. Yeah, I think so. It's uh. Um, he's a guy that loves to wear people down, you know, like he, uh, 
I was reading some statistic from last year where his the vast majority of his explosives came in, in the fourth quarter, which is obviously a byproduct of a guy that's wearing you down. Um, so we have to go the opposite way. You know, we have to – it's not surviving this guy, it's punishing this guy. And in the fourth, it's going to be on our terms, and that's where we wear you down, you know. So uh, Will, Quan, CJ – Quinn and we got you know we got some guys with that type of mentality that want to finish you so um, we got to keep growing that mentality though within the defense as a collective unit. It's going to be your rookie's first time on the road. What do you tell them about going to an environment like this? This is why we practice so hard. This is why we prepare at the highest level. That's why we approach every single day, walk through meetings, the whole thing as championship moments. And um, it's not. You know, you go into a playoff game, and I know it sounds nuts, and I, I know it, it's a little bit of coach talk, but everything's a championship moment. So that the big moments become normal, you know, and and the moments maybe that some people thought that don't think are big become normal, and everything just becomes the same. You do things one way, you don't pick and choose, and uh, and that's when you create a standard, and that's when you you create a championship level of consistency, in my opinion. You're talking about Chubb and the, the, them wearing people out with Chubb. What about that offensive line? Yep. Uh, you know, with Tony O and Teller and Wills, there's a lot of talent there. How big a yep. challenge are they? Yeah, the, the the whole collective unit with both runners, um, an offense, offensive line, um, and you've got a play caller that's absolutely dedicated to, you know, he's going to get it going. Like, I I really believe like a two and a half run, two and a half yard run is, is success in his eyes sometimes because he's not backing away no matter how many times you stuff him. So, um, no matter how well we play it, like it's still going to be a physical run game in the fourth quarter. I know that. I just I know that's the way they're built. That's the way we're approaching it, and we're excited about that opportunity.